Hello again, welcome to another edition of Crop Life Retail Week. As you can tell, we're not in our usual fabulous studio with the uh, green screen background. We are uh, on location in Louisville, downtown, at the um, uh, Southern States uh, training event and just doing a couple of presentations on what's happening in the marketplace. So, uh, we're kind of forced to come to you live from, from a remote, <laughs> remote, remote location. So it's been a, it's, it's been a pretty good couple of days. I mean, you, I know you've, you, you took in some of the, some of the sessions along with our own and, and found a few things out. Uh, yeah, actually, Paul, one of the things that was talked about, of course, was Dicamba, an application of Dicamba in 2018 here at the Southern States event. Uh, they were uh, providing some uh, training and informational course for the uh, attendees that uh, was being given by the folks from Monsanto and Paul one of the things I didn't know that I found out was that uh, in 2017 Monsanto helped give out over a million tips and nozzles to applicators and growers across the US who wanted to apply dicamba and they promised to help again in 2018 for anyone interested so interesting yeah no, well, it's gonna need all the help we can get next year also assuming we can get through the <laughs> <laughs> through the regulatory and yes. uh, other challenges that, that are going to be happening through the, the rest of it before our spring season. And you actually, uh, while we were here in Louisville and I was uh, sticking around in Louisville, you went from Louisville to Washington and back. So you want to talk about some of the uh, folks you saw while you were in uh, our nation's capital? Yeah, well I think it'll be the first time I've been on six planes in three and a half days. <laughs> quite an experience. Uh, which I, probably commonplace for some people, but uh, interesting for him. Anyway, we were uh, uh, in D.C. We had a reception, we being the, the, the group called the Coalition to Advance Precision Agriculture, which is based in, in Washington, and it's really designed to try to create events and information so uh, it creates a greater understanding of the benefits of technology and precision ag in agriculture overall. So um, the idea was to get regulators and staffers and so forth there, and you know it was a little touch and go with the uh, with the shutdown of the government it was oh, right, uh, yes. or white knuckling there uh, right through Monday at lunch, and then they ended up having ended up saying, okay, we're good to go. So we, we went down there. We had uh, uh, TopCon, uh, Mike Gomes, friend of ours, is uh, was down there with a display and was explaining things uh, how they work and. You know, some of the intricacies of the technology to, to some of the staffers there. It was very well attended by um, uh, pretty much all the standards of people that I've, I've been to talk with there. It's, it was, there was probably about 75 to 80 people in the room uh, and uh, it, was, it was really nice. We felt like, you know, we we're trying to chip away at uh, the uh, lack of understanding and trying to get people to get their minds around it. We talked about uh, in particular about wireless internet with uh, with uh, the president bringing it up the recent farm bureau meeting and really the the, the broader need for it, talking about how really the, to get data exchanged fully uh, to get fully engaged with data exchange between equipment and, and in offices and to, to get the full benefits of, of, of the internet and and data we need to be able to communicate wirelessly more efficiently than we are now so it was good it was good to have that audience and, and a pretty good day yeah, as I was saying, you also saw some of our friends at TFI, I understand. Yeah, I swung by and saw Kathy Mathers at the Fertilizer Institute and talked a little bit about some of the things that are happening, particularly with the 4R program. I know that they're, uh, they have 4R Summit that's coming up uh, in, in the summertime, and uh, they're really going to continue to, to you'll continue to see more, uh, I think, more uh, information, more initiatives coming up in the 4R program. That was, that was a good visit, and then I stopped by and saw our friends at the American Sea Trade Association. Uh, their office is out in Alexandria, who we, uh, I have not actually gotten a chance to go there before, so it was nice to see uh, Andy Levine, who's the, who's the main man there, and find out a little bit more about seed issues, and a lot of it is involving the, the emerging seed technologies and how, um, how they're classified versus GMOs, and, you know, I think uh, to some degree GMOs have become, we've become resigned to the, the consumers not understanding this and not, now we're, now we're at a point where we're trying to make sure that we don't lump some of these other technologies in with just, well, they're the same as GMOs, because right. there's definite clear differences and benefits for, for some of these things that are emerging, and so that's a, that's been a big part of their work, uh, along with everything else that they're doing, so. Okay. Well, the only other thing to share, of course, Paul and I are here at Southern States event, uh, one of the topics we've been talking about, of course, is industry consolidation. And we've been updating all of you, uh, our viewers, uh, regarding what's been going on on that front. 
Uh, Bayer and Monsanto, uh, they've been getting together here now for about a year uh, informally and I know they were hopeful to have that deal closed by the end of the first quarter of 2018, but a few weeks ago we reported that the Euro European Commission was uh, not real comfortable with the deal as it stood and we found out this week that they are formally going to delay making a decision until March 5th. So Paul, it looks like uh, Bayer and Monsanto, best case scenario, will not have their deal consummated before April 1st and probably it'll maybe, I would imagine, be uh, halfway through 2018 before we see this deal finalized uh, completely. Yeah. It's 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 still a lot of um, there's still a lot to go. You know, even I, I, I did see someone from uh, Dow Dupont at the at the uh, at the reception as well, and you know it's not nothing nothing unpleasant, but it will be continued to be messy for probably for the entire year of 2018 until they really get things kind of squared away. There's so much from the cultural standpoint, from the business standpoint, to to align that it's going to be it's going to be a long slog. These are huge companies. It's going to take some time. Yep. I guess one other thing from, from this event here that was really interesting and good to see is there's a lot of discussion about the value of retails or retailers bring, a lot of discussion about, um, you know, even, even when you're talking about nozzle tips and adjuvants and making decisions about products and mixes and so forth, that's the kind of, uh, all that that retailers bring is value and we need to remember that, uh, that we're, always, we're always doing that for, for growers, it's not always the most obvious things, but it's the things we do every day, but all that stuff has value, and it all it, it all contributes to the to what we charge growers because that expertise just you know it's it's not just there. We we gain it and we use it. So let's continue to continue to use it, continue to um, uh, to charge for that value. Amen. That's it for this edition of Crop Life Retail Week. Thanks for joining us, and we will see you next week.